Back to blue. I have your next room for you. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, how you all doing? I'm fine, and you? All right, I'm Dr. Blue. Hi, nice to meet you. I understand that Max is eight years old. Yes. Tell me what's going on. Two weeks ago, he wasn't eating, and he just wanted to be laying down. So my husband's like, well, there's something wrong with him because he's very active. Whenever he gets home or they get home, he's there right at the door. So that's when we decided to you know, take him into the clinic. Uh, the first thing they did to him was blood work. Yeah. Next step was to do an x-ray. They weren't able to tell us anything. We've noticed that since the first time we took him in two weeks ago, he's lost weight. He's been with us eight years, and he's never been sick. Yeah. We've done his shots every year. At home, it's me, my husband, and we have nothing but girls. <laughs> so my husband's like, he's the only one that's with me because he's a male, you know, dog, and he's like, I have to do what we have to to get him feel better. A house full of women? Yes. Oh, man, I know your husband's like, oh, I need my buddy back. Yes, so that's his buddy. Let me have a listen to him. There's definitely some increased lung sounds. OK. Especially on his right lung field. Yeah, he's got some wheezing right now. You can see the dried up nasal discharge. OK. OK, that's very apparent. You can see the froth coming from his nose. OK. That's very serious. When I have froth, that means air bubbles are interacting with some other form, which is usually some type of liquid means he can't breathe as well, and that's a reduction in the exchange of oxygen, which can really be life-threatening. I would start by saying that we're dealing with some form of, obviously, a respiratory disease. We have seen cases of influenza here in Texas that's causing a more like a pneumonia. Influenza is an actual virus. It can cause different disease processes or conditions like pneumonia. Pneumonia is actually uh, an inflammatory process that we see that takes place within the lungs. It's a very real disease. Not that I want to scare you at all, but something that we do need to be concerned with is the fact that you do have young immune systems at your house. Yes. And there have been some cases that spread influenza from animals to people. Oh, wow. When a dog coughs, sneezes, those droplets can go up to 20 feet. I don't want to leave it to chance. OK. My recommendation is that we're going to hospitalize him in our isolation ward, uh, treating him for pneumonia. And hopefully, we can get Max feeling a little bit better here. I don't like to see him like this. He's going to stay here, OK? And we're going to make him feel better, and then we're going to be able to come pick him up whenever he feels better, OK? He can't breathe. He can't live. So it's very important that we figure out what's going on with him and start treating him. He's going to be OK. You get your buddy back. Dr. Blue's going to help Max. You want Dr. Blue to help Max? Yes? See? We're just giving him food and water, just little amounts every two hours, just so he's he's got some energy and got some food in his system. Max, you OK? Hmm? Let me go get Dr. Blue real quick. That dog is really turning blue whenever I give him food and water. Like, it's like bad. Yeah, come on in. Dr. Blue, you know Max is really turning blue whenever he's, like, eating or drinking? Like, he's actually turning blue. I'm thinking that what's happening is Max is getting a little bit more worked up than, than he should be, causing him to breathe more. He's already, his, his breathing's already compromised, so with that extra activity, and he's, <laughs> he's becoming short of breath. And his gums are turning blue from hypoventilation. I do want to shoot the x-rays, though, to kind of see what his lung tissue looks like. All right, bud, got to take some x-rays. There's no tracheal deviation, which is good. The trachea is in line. It's actually open. Lungs look rough. There's just a lot of congestion in that lung. And you know that because, like, you know, the lungs are supposed to be black. Mm -hmm. So the, right, the more white or more opacity that you're seeing, talks about the more soft tissue that's there and fluid mm -hmm. uh, inflammation can all show up as a, some soft tissue look. So, I mean, he's definitely dealing with a pneumonia. And you don't have to take another x-ray. I don't want to stress him out. 
Because I'm concerned that Max has pneumonia, we're gonna actually do a treatment plan of IV fluids, IV antibiotics, and some nebulization. Gotta get this guy home. Max's family is here to check on him since he's been hospitalized. I asked for Dr. Fayeke to take him in so they can have some time with him, but Max is still not ready to go home quite yet. Look who it is! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You made it, buddy. Here you go. Oh, my God. He looks much I know. Better. Every time I walk past ISO, he's just, am I going home? Am I going home? I bet. Yeah, like, when are they so picking nice. me up? Exactly. Okay, so you can tell we're still kind of sniffing like that. We're a lot better hey, than what we were, but we're not out of the woods yet. Take the yes. cone of shame off, kid, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Yeah. There we go. When we brought him in, he was breathing much faster, but now he's doing much, yeah. much better. Yes. Yay. You're doing better. Man. Yes, Max. You made it, buddy. That's my boy, my only boy, my buddy. Mm -hmm. All right, you ready, Max? Let's go, big guy. Max has come a long way since he came here to Cypher, and now he's ready to go home. Look who it is. Look at it, he's all happy. Yeah. He's like, I spent enough time here. Yeah. I'm done. We thought he wasn't going to make it. I'm so glad he's doing better. Max actually is recovering really, really well. Okay. But keep a good, close watch on him. If he gets to the point where he starts wheezing really hard, I don't want you to wait. I want you to come right back in. Right back. OK, All right. that's fine. But he looks much better. Thank you very, very much. Absolutely. Max is back. Yes, he sure is. Hello. Hey. Hello. Dr. Ross, this is my son, okay. Joseph. And uh, he's the one that adopted this little guy. It's been several weeks since I've seen Marshall. Look at him. He looks amazing. Oh my God, they straightened out, huh? They did. Yeah, very much so. He doesn't have that bold appearance of his legs. You can't even tell. Come here, cute little puppy. He runs full tilt out in the backyard. <laughs> he's growing real big. That means he's eating good. He's sitting down, he's not shaking. I remember he was shaking, especially mm -hmm. on that left leg, he was shaking it. But that lets me know that his ligaments have strengthened up really well and his gait's normal. He went from hobbity, hobbity running to yeah. now running and jumping like he's, oh yeah, he's a pro now. Oh, so he's sprinting now. Oh, he sprints and he hops on everything. The owners provided a good, well-balanced diet, provided proper supplementation, and where he was to where he is now, it makes me feel good, so I'm happy. Yeah, we are too. Marshall's a great story. It lets me know that just because you see a, a, a puppy in a pound that has some type of condition that you may look over or think it's a terminal condition, if that puppy touches your heart, adopt it. You always can take it to a, a, your veterinarian. It may be something as simple as changing a diet that makes all the difference in its growth and its development. You gonna have your study partner? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just make sure he doesn't eat your books. Give me a solid excuse, but... I don't think the dog ate my homework will work. <laughs> not, not at this age, right? Not at this age. <laughs> All right, you have a nice day. All right, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.